Hey everybody, so today we are going to be walking through what is the difference between mapping and linking and what are the different types or ways to do mapping and linking. So I will start out by saying if you're watching this video and you start to say, oh, I'm not using this correctly. Maybe I was, you know, saying the wrong word this whole time. Don't stress out about that because a lot of people use these interchangeably. Um, at the end of the day, both are looking at different data sets or different databases um, and looking at how either fields or the values of those fields, so like a taxonomy term, um, how are they similar or are they not similar? And to what degree? Sometimes when you're doing mapping, for instance, you can say something is a partial match versus an exact match. Um, so that's essentially what you're doing here is you're trying to create a bridge between one data set or one value and another data set and another value. And typically speaking, you are doing this either through an API call where you're saying, OK, I need all the data that means customer from these you know, various data sources, or you're doing something where you are creating a brand new data set. So um, this would be you know, if you're migrating data and you need to take data from one uh, data source or database and completely move it over and use it in the other that you're, you're now moving everything to. So that's where you actually need to do like an ETL process where you're extracting, transforming, and then loading it into this new file or this new database or whatever you're using it for. So typically speaking, that's how both of these work and why you're, you're doing this. It's a lot of reuse is, is why you're doing this too, is instead of having to um, recreate something, uh, from scratch, you can reuse, hey, there's another database that already uses this, or there's another linked open vocabulary, like let's say mesh, the medical subject headings that, hey, I don't need to come up with all these things all by myself because there's other things out there that are also using it. And I can just lift it up and use it, which is mapping, or I can link to it, which are hyperlinks. That's another thing that people get confused about with this is linking usually does involve having a URI or a URL. It looks an awful lot like those things that we see for websites. And the reason for that is when Tim Berners-Lee came up with linked data, he was imagining the entire web interconnected. And it kind of is doing that, but it's not uh, always <laughs> mapping together in, in a way that you can crawl it easily because not everything is normalized or standardized unless, you know, you consider something like schema.org, where if something is using schema.org, you can kind of, you know, interchange and understand what everything is using. When you are doing linked data, it doesn't always mean that URL that is being created or that URI is resolvable. So this is where we're getting into those five stars of linked data. So before going any farther with this conversation, let's go and look at the stars one through three before we get into four and five, which I would consider more true to form for linked data. So level one of linked data is, uh, I would consider more of a mapping situation where you're not even getting the data itself and doing anything with it per se. You're really just creating a translation layer, but it will eventually be used like an ETL process to, to pick up those different fields or those different values and then do something with them when you're moving it into a new file. Um, these don't even have to be used for ETL, this, this one star uh, mapping file. Sometimes these are considered like crosswalks where they're just references for humans even to understand when you see this term, it means this term in a different organization or a different discipline, for instance. That's why it is just one star. It is starting to build that translation layer, but it's not actually taking a whole lot of action on it. And there's no um, interlinking. It's really just um, typing in the values of how one thing is related to another. Level two is where a lot of people are when they are making a mapping file, and that is, you know, a CSV or an Excel file. And so we've all been there, we've all seen it, where you have one column for one database or one schema, and you have another column that is the other database or the other schema. And you're basically saying how these things relate to each other. Um, so this is where you could say customer in database one, 
is user in database two. And you use these oftentimes when you're dealing with subject matter experts who are not always data scientists. Oftentimes they're not. They just understand the data that they always work with or how to interpret the data if you're, you know, more information science. And they can go in and using Excel as a simple format to say this field connects to that field or this term, if you're talking taxonomy or, you know, even like a knowledge graph node connects to this one. So maybe the difference here would be business in an ontology is related to this other node company. Okay, so now we are going to be getting into three, four, and five star linked data. And we're going to walk through why it's linked data and how mapping kind of intermixes between these and often why these are used interchangeably because you can see they have similar applications and they kind of play off of each other. So let's go in and do some investigation. And by the way, I'm going to be using the UMLS, which is the Unified Medical Language System. I'm using that because a lot of mapping and linking has already been done by experts in medical, much more expert uh, than I am in medical. And we're going to be using that. So you can go and use this to recreate what we're doing here. And you can do it on anything in the medical space. The other thing we're going to be using is Web Protege, which is an open, highly regarded tool where you can do uh, schema and vocabulary modeling. So typically it's used for ontologies, but you can certainly use taxonomies and knowledge graphs in the same space. So if you're interested on in how to turn this into one of those three things, I have a video up above where you can go and check that out. But for now, we're just going to be doing the modeling and, and build out of the linking and the mapping model. So you can see what that looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find what we want as our target. So what do we need for our use case? And we're going to go up and create two nodes or concepts to start demonstrating how we do mapping. So the first one is going to be tumor. Create. And then we're going to do another and it's going to be. Okay, so what you are seeing is behind the scenes, the IRI is being generated. And then this is the uh, ID that is being generated from Web Protege, and you can always customize what that looks like. But for now, we're just gonna leave it at the presets. You can also see that Web, Pro Web Protege creates the label for you automatically, and it's using RDF to start with, but we're gonna be using SCOS. So I'm going to change it to SCOS. You can see it starts to auto populate for you. So we're going to go down to pref label because this is the preferred label is hair loss. I'm going to go here and do SCOS pref label. Okay. Now you'll see that in the class hierarchy, these have changed the IDs. That's kind of hard to view. So we're going to go up to display and we're going to say that we want the display to be the SCOS pref label. And there you go. Now we have the human readable labels back. Okay, so when we're doing three star link data, what you need to do is go out uh, to the source vocabularies or source schema that you were trying to map in to your target. And so uh, if we're looking at UMLS, this is linked open data. You will be able to resolve this no matter where you're coming from. Then you have your semantic types and your definitions. Definitions is where we're going to look at three star link data first, because you can see there's nine different definitions. So here's where mapping and linking kind of interchange a little bit. So if you're doing just linking and you can see the different terms and the codes and the vocabularies that it's coming from, you will be able to get from neoplasms, which is a mesh or medical subject heading term. And if I click on this, and let's just do that real quick, I get directed to the mesh label for this and all the other data that's associated with it. Now, you'll also see that there are ontology or knowledge graph relations. And a lot of the names and other things are using either SCOS or Dublin Core or another standardized schema so you can map them together very quickly. I noticed I said map because this is 
pulling this data from Mesh and then building a separate data source for UMLS, which is neoplasms. And that's why you can see this Mesh definition is listed here because when you're mapping, you are using that link, right? So you're linking neoplasms right here to Mesh. And then you can go and grab this either manually with a download or with an API call. And then you can assemble in an ETL all of this into a new data source. That is the mapping part. And the linking part is what we're seeing here. We're, we're directing humans and machines to say these two things are the same between these two different data sources. Okay. The reason this is three star link data up here is because this is just an annotation. So an annotation is uh, just another piece of metadata. And so we're gonna use this to document what neo, what, what is the equivalent in mesh. And then we're going to add the citation within the annotation, which means it's not going to be resolvable. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know mesh and we know this is the ID. So we're gonna grab that ID and we're gonna go over into our own uh, data that we're, we're mapping with. And we're going to say that this ID right here is a alt label, so SCOS alt label. Now you'll see this is not clickable, right? Like it's just a piece of data. So this is just creating that, that mapping file or those directions on how two things map together. Now, this is a unique ID, but again, we're not actually doing the linking here. So we need to do something about this uh, so that others can see where this is coming from. So normally I do this in brackets. So I would say mesh. And I always put, again, the citation of when I gathered this information. So we're going to say 2023, which is when I, I originally grabbed this information because it's still early in 2024. So likely it is 2023 data. Okay. So this is really good because even if you don't do linking <laughs> and you don't do all of that, you can still add the citation or the uh, affiliation information so that you can know where this data came from. You can then understand how trustworthy it is depending on that source. And if you are working in the LLM space or you're working with chatbots, you know, trust is a very important thing, especially with your data sources. So having this as part of your data, this provenance is really important. Okay, so let's move on to four star link data. So that's where you can do interlinking within your own vocabularies. Now, normally you would have this linking between two different data sources or two different databases. For demonstration, I'm going to just take the data from Mesh and put it into this vocabulary so we can see how those look. Okay, so I'm going to say this is my uh, demo vocabulary. And I'm going to, oops, I need to change this to post ref label. There we go. And these two are part of my vocabulary for demo. So I'm going to stick them under demo. There we go. Now I'm going to say mesh is the other one. And I'm going to create that. And now I'm going to put something underneath that, which is neoplasm. There we go. Okay, so now imagine this is a different vocabulary and a data source than this. Now to link to this neoplasm, we're going to go down and we're going to grab the IRI. We're going to copy that. We're going to go back. Oh, and it didn't have the value. So, yep. And we're going to add this here. Now you'll see this is an actual link. It's showing you that this can be linked to. 
So if you are calling this with an API, you could get to this data set and, on Tumor and you can then go look at all the alt labels that link out to internal, right? Because this is, this is the web protege um, default that I made. So even though this is mesh and I'm saying it's mesh, it's really just linking it to another internal system or schema. Now let's look at what five star link data looks like. Five star link data is when you are actually linking out to external systems. So now we're going to go into actual mesh, which is the uh, medical subject headings to grab the true URI for this. So it can do that link resolving to the actual site where all of this information is. So you can see here, we are now on neoplasms. This is the mesh. You can see all the data that we have. And we can see that this is the URI that we should use. So the RDF UID. We're going to go in. We're going to say alt. Oops, this ghost part. Ghost alt label. And we're going to do that. There we go. So now if you were coming in and you were trying to understand where to get more information, because this is just a uh, linked file, linked data file. It's, it's just linking out and in to other data sources. It's not actually grabbing any of the other, other data from those data sources. That would be a mapping project where you go out, you do the API call, or you grab it from other systems and you take all that data and you map it together to create a new data set. And that is mapping. Linking is linking to all of those things as a map, not to be confused with mapping, uh, or a translation layer. So you can get from one thing to another without having to figure out, is this really the same thing as that thing? Because that's where one and two star link data is helpful where you can go in and make those CSV files from using you know, doctors or nurses or whoever, experts, SMEs, to tell you tumor and neoplasm is the same thing. So then you can go and do all of this work and codify it like this. Now I've been using alt label a lot, but I wanna show you one other way to do a linking. Now let's say that I want to connect this to hair loss. I'm going to add this as a new property. So I haven't built out any custom properties, which you would do over here in properties. So I'm just gonna go and add one really quick. I'm just gonna say is um, similar to. Okay, similar to. Now for this next part, I am going to change the IRIs just to make it a little easier to see how this would work. All right, so this is using the IRI uh, that is auto-generated. So for hair loss, I'm actually gonna get rid of that. I'm going to show you, go up to display, Oops, no, sorry, project settings. And here's where your um, new entity settings are. And right now it's auto generated UIDs. I'm going to have supplied name. Um, now I'm going to create hair loss again. See, and now the IRI is hair loss. Okay, now let's go back to tumor. Oh yeah, change my scopes, label, there we go. Okay, now let's go back and do similar to, and now we're gonna do hair loss. And so you can start to find the things that you wanna link together that are more similarities rather than equivalencies. Now this is, really linked data, right? Like you're not actually doing a mapping because you're not saying these two things are the same thing. And if you pick this data up and you um, were creating a new data set, you wouldn't make hair loss and tumors the same thing. Like that same data would not be used to create a new conjoined or, or um, merged representation of tumor from all the different data sources that mean the same thing as tumor. This is doing true linking where you're saying, hey, this is linked to this other thing, and here's how it's linked. 
that's really where you get into true linked data. All right, so for those that are not familiar with how Web Protege works, like obviously we're working in, you know, a, a general UI, a GUI, um, but you can download what we've just done. So if you needed to then use this linking and mapping file for passing on to developers or, you know, folks that are developing APIs, um, you would download it and you get your download file and then you can open up in any of your text editors uh, or your code editors and you can see here you have all of the namespaces that are going on up here. You have the object that we created. You can see it here and also this is an RDF file by the way. And then here are the classes, right? So here is our hair loss one and then this is the one remember we were not um, looking at human readable URIs. So this one is the one we have for tumors. And then here's all the information we have on that. And then here's some of that mesh stuff that we added in. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware when we're doing this, it's actually generating the code behind the scenes. That's what, you know, normally these editors allow you to do. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, we can keep going a little bit farther into how mapping and linking works, but I think this is a good representation for you to go get started and kind of play around with it yourself and see how it goes. All right, so I hope this has been helpful and I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.